All right, in this lesson we're talking about applications of exponential functions and sort of the classic application of that is uh, interest that's compounded annually or compounded in some manner um, after being deposited into a bank account. So the question that was sent in here by Peyton is obviously very applicable to that, so we'll use it as our background information. His question says that at age 25, Tracy invests $1,500 in an account that has an APR of 6.5% compounded annually. How much is in Tracy's account at the age of 65? So she's going to have the money in the account from age 25 to 65. So it's going to be in there 40 years. Um, it's $1,500 she's investing. So her sorry, time is 40 years. So her principal, P, would be $1,500. That's the amount she started with. Um, her rate, her APR, is 6.5%. And the number of times it's compounded is 1. It says it's compounded annually, so one time each year. So n equals 1. So these are the values that we generally need to work with when we're talking about dealing with an exponential function, uh, particularly when we're talking about interest and money. Uh, we need to know how long the money's been in uh, been invested, how much money we started with, what the principal was, um, what the rate the money was invested at was, and how often that money was compounded. Now the formula we use to calculate that is um, the amount total, AT, so the amount total, the, the amount that you end up with, is equal to the principal times 1 plus the rate divided by the number of compounds. What that means is we take the amount of money that we started with and we're going to multiply it by itself, or by one, I mean, so that we get that amount of money. And in addition, we get whatever the rate is, so in this case, 6.5% of that money. And we divide that by the number of times it's compounded each year, so that if it's, if it's a, a bank account where it's compounded, say, monthly, we would take that rate, that 6.5%, and we'd divide it by 12 because it'd be only some portion of it that was calculated each month. Now, in this particular question, we don't have to worry about that number because it's just 1. Um, anything divided by 1 is itself, so it's just going to disappear out of the bottom of our function. And then we're going to take that amount, and we're going to raise it to the power of the number of times it's compounded. Again, in this case, we don't care because it's 1 times something, so it's going to fall out times the number of times, uh, the, the number of years it's been invested. So for our purposes, we're going to sort of simplify this, this expression, and we're going to say that the amount total, the amount that he ended up with, is the principal, $1,500, times 1 plus the rate. The rate is 6.5%, so that's 0 0.065, to the power of 40, 40 years. So we have a sort of a simplified version of that same expression because we didn't have to worry about the number of compounds. So now we just need to take 1 plus 0 0.065 to the power of 40 on a calculator. So we do 1.065 and raise that to the power of 40. We get 12.416. So that'll mean we'll have 1,500 times 12.416. 6, which is 18,624, 624, uh, my 2s and 4s lately have been a mess, 624, there we go. So that says that if she started with $1,500 and she invested it at 6.5%, then every year it would be 1 and 6.5% bigger than it was for 40 years. After 40 years, the amount of money that she has in that account is going to be $18,624. And that's assuming she never adds anything else at all. She just started with $1,500 and just left it there. And over time, it would grow on its own up to that $18,500.